Good morning everyone and welcome to Hasbury Christian Fellowship on Sunday the 18th of July. It's lovely to be with you this morning and for a change this morning because the uh, weather is so good when I'm recording and because the weather forecast is so good for Sunday the 18th I thought perhaps we'd record the first part of this service outside. We're hoping live to be able to do some of the service at least outside this morning so you're very welcome wherever you are and thank you for joining with us this morning let's start this morning by singing together looking in the sky whoever could deny your glory lord you are an amazing god
Lord, you are an amazing God and we thank you. Wherever we are this morning, we thank you for the wonderful world that you've given us to live in. You have given us so many incredible gifts and we thank you for the sky, for the birds singing, for the water running, for the flowers growing, for the butterflies, for, for just everything, Lord. Such a beautiful, amazing world that we live in and we just want to say thank you. Thank you for accepting us into your presence this morning. Thank you that you welcome us into your presence this morning. And Lord, help us to really appreciate being in your presence this morning. Lord, we commit this service into your hands. Amen. And we've even got the sound of dogs barking, but the cats haven't started meowing yet. Let's sing together again and let's sing, uh, Come, people of the risen King, who delight to bring him praise. Let's sing this together.
that song says, rejoice, rejoice, let every tongue rejoice, one heart, one voice, so Church of Christ, rejoice. I'd like to read some words this morning from Matthew chapter 6, starting at verse 26, and it says this, look at the birds of the air, they do not sow, or reap, or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the fields grow. They do not labour or spin, yet I tell you, that not even Solomon in all his splendour was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Seek first his kingdom. And as we focus on Jesus and his kingdom this morning and all the, the, con the contentment and the satisfaction that Jesus can give to us, let's sing together, shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory.
you for those words that we've just sung. Lord, the light of your love is shining in the midst of the darkness, shining. Jesus, light of the world, shine upon us. Lord, we thank you that your light is shining in our world. Although at times it seems dark, thank you that your light is shining. Lord, we lift to you those people who we know need to feel your touch this morning, whatever the reason. Those who are sick, those who are struggling with mental illness or emotional illness, those who are struggling because of the difficulties of somebody that they love. Lord, we just lift them to you, people of the risen King. Pray for each one of us that we will feel your hand of healing, your hand of love, your hand of power. Lord, we pray for those in other parts of the world who are really struggling, struggling with so much more than we are. Thank you that you know each one of these people individually. You know them by name. And we bring them to you, Lord. Lord, you are an amazing God. We've sung that this morning and we know that you are an amazing God. And we pray that the world will know that you are an amazing God and will know your amazing love and power. Lord, we pray that you will make each one of us to shine, to shine with your glory, with your love. Father, this morning as David speaks to us, we pray, Lord, that you will speak through him, that we will feel uplifted and encouraged. And at the same time, we will feel challenged and inspired. We pray that we will hear your voice speaking to us through David this morning. We commit this time to you. Thank you, Lord, for each other. Help us to love one another with just a fraction of the love that you show to us. Lord, you are an amazing God. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Let's sing together again. Let's sing a song where you can get on your feet if you want to, where we specifically focus on Jesus. Takwaba, Uwaba, and Geyezu. There's no one, there's no one like Jesus. Wherever you search, you will not find anyone like Jesus. Let's sing this together again. And if you want to get on your feet and do some actions, then please do. Takwaba. Are we ready? Takwaba. Takwa ba hu wa bange yesu Takwa ba hu wa bange yesu Takwa ba hu wa bange yesu Takwa ba takwa hakabe Na yenda yenda konse konse na fwaya fwaya konse konse na shingaluka konse konse takwa ba takwa hakabe there's no one there's no one like jesus there's no one there's no one like jesus there's no one there's no one like jesus there's no one there's no one like him i walk who walk who here, there, I searchy, searchy, here, there, I turn around, e, here, there, there's no one, there's no one like him. And before David comes to speak to us this morning, uh, the next song is going to be led for us by Maisin. It's a song I will rise, no matter what is going on our hope is in jesus and he will raise us up to him so let's sing i will rise <laughs>
Good morning, everyone. It's good to be able to share with you. Shall we just pray? Lord Jesus, 
I ask that you would speak into our hearts by your spirit. Amen. Amen. Uh, I want to share some thoughts this morning and uh, if we want a title to hang it, hang it on, it's going to be papering over the cracks. Well, a week on from the uh, European Cup final, you have probably thought that we'd got over football and probably glad that it's over. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I'm not going to let you escape from that fact. Why? Well, because England's defeat at that football game, and there's a clue in the word that it, it's a game, um, it kind of tore away some of the paper that was over the cracks. It revealed a gaping crack of basically what the human race is like. You know, I saw football uh, supporters all dressed in their, their um, knight's armour, um, kind of representing St George. I uh, remember Will when he was young having a bit of a knight's armour and his shield and his sword and coming around trying to hack all of us. Um, but when we see a knight, uh, certainly for me, I always have that sense of chivalry and justice. But what an illusion it was when we looked at that football match and afterwards saw the hatred and the venom, in, venom that was targeted at some of those players simply because of their colour of their skin, because they failed to score a goal and fulfil maybe the dreams and the satisfaction of all those supporters. You know, we say that we're in a pandemic as we are, but what is really infecting us as a, as a, a, a nation, as a world, is endemic. Our societies are being corroded, they're being corrupted, they're flawed. And you know, the Bible has a word for that. The Bible calls it sin. S Scripture tells us in the Bible that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And so this simple three letter word, sin, is a reflection of who we are individually and a reflection then collectively as a, of our society. When we see that kind of reaction with everyone and everywhere in different circumstances if we're honest it's in our hearts too even though we might not want it to be you know we kind of revert to our animalistic type of nature the one where you see what when animals are trying to predators like a lion are trying to hunt down um, some food a prey they pick off if it's a herd of, of buffalo or whatever it might be they pick off the weakest member Maybe one that's got a, 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 has, has been made lame, has a, a damaged leg, or maybe it's a, a young infant that can't run as much. That's the one that gets picked off. And as a society, we pick off individuals, don't we? We pick off those that are vulnerable, the weak, those who are different. And I often wonder, why is that the case? And in a sense, it's a kind of reflection of our own personal unrest our own personal dissatisfaction with life and who we are. An old colleague of, of mine many years ago when he used to write uh, uh, pupil reports, um, one of the, he was an English teacher, and one of the reports that he wrote uh, about one student was that he, and the student, he, he said he was floating on the ocean, floating rudderless on the ocean of life. And that's a bit like us very often, isn't it, as people? Not, one, not finding the place where we really will find satisfaction. Nothing satisfies us in the world. You know, interestingly, as I've got older, you know, sometimes you, you think back about the things that you enjoyed to eat when you were younger, and sometimes you, you find them out, dig them out, and not only have they changed in size, you know, wagon wheels have, have shrunk to the smallest um, <laughs> possible dimensions, and I'm sure it's not the fact that they were we were children they looked bigger they definitely have shrunk but that sense that the taste the taste is is different things that were really good they don't satisfy anymore and you know when things don't satisfy us then there's a result that sometimes other people suffer you know one of the sad facts 
about the football tournament and the football matches that we've had is that with the women uh, in, in England wanted England to win. There was a campaign about it. And the simple reason that they wanted England to win was because if they lost, they knew they were going to be subject to verbal, physical abuse from their partners, from their husbands, who were trying to uh, vent their frustration, their anger, their dissatisfaction. You know, when we get hurt physically, something we tend to lash out, don't we? Uh, and um, retaliate. I don't know if you ever do it, but or maybe I do it. You know, sometimes you hit something, you hit your elbow on, on the door frame and it hurts and you kind of want to hit the door frame back. It, it's almost like a, a natural reaction. And what we need to do is we need to kind of see things in the bigger picture, the bigger perspective of things. That football is just a game. And suddenly it becomes, sadly, a life and death. Hurt, emotional hurt. And it shouldn't be that way. Where do we invest our emotions? Well, we have to ask the question, of, of course, is where does God fit into all of this? I mentioned Sini earlier, but I want to mention Jesus because he is the most important person in the entire universe. Um, he was here on this earth as a man, and yet he was resented by various religious re leaders and the religious authority at the time. They were seeking their own position of authority. They saw Jesus as a threat, and they also saw him as somebody who failed to accomplish what they were hoping for. They were hoping that Jesus, who was supposed to be the Messiah, was going to come and get rid of the Romans and free Israel. That's the, what they wanted. And so for them, Jesus had missed the penalty. And so it tells us that as Jesus was lying, dying, was on the cross dying, these people came along and hurled insult at him. Uh, let's read it from Mark's Gospel and chapter 15. And verse 29, just a, a few verses, it says this. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, So, you who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, come down from the cross and save yourself. In the same way, the chief priests and the teachers of the law mocked him among themselves. <laughs> he saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. Let this Christ, this King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those crucified with him also heaped insults on him. Jesus was becoming the scapegoat. And it's interesting, isn't it, that the scapegoat is... Um, a scriptural reference back in um, Leviticus we read about the fact that the priest would have uh, two goats and one goat would be selected for sacrifice and the other one would be sent out into the wilderness and um, to carry the atonement of the um, people of Israel. Jesus was the scapegoat but he'd failed as the authorities um, saw it he'd failed to achieve what they we're expecting. And there kind of, in a sense, lies the rub, doesn't it? Jesus was saving them. He was saving you and saving me. You know, the issue was not the Roman occupation. The issue was the soul of man. It's not the circumstances they were in, but the circumstances within that was the problem, the circumstance of the soul. There's a bigger picture. There's a bigger picture to life. And it's that picture is, for that picture, we need to know where we fit. Where do you and I fit in this picture? It's kind of a corny statement, but you might describe Jesus as the greatest goalie that ever existed in all time because he saved the whole world. He saved you and I from our sins. Christ's action was a sacrifice, a sacrifice of substitution. He saved you by taking upon himself 
the, 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 the wrath of God, the righteous and right wrath of God. <coughs> Excuse me. The punishment that should be deserved for you and I. It's as if we're the ones that spat in God's face. But God, Jesus took the punishment that we should face. That's what sin is. And it's at the heart of the world's problems. You know, and we can paper over the cracks. We can be nice. We can be a good person. But deep down, we all resent at times. We all hate or love less. We're all envious. We're all very much self-centred. <coughs> Excuse me. And Jesus came in to our world to set us free. It's almost like a bandage where there's a wound that you've bandaged over, but it's still a festering wound and it's not cleared up. It needs to be dealt with or else we're poisoned and it leads to death. Jesus came into the world to cleanse each one of us, to set us free. You know, and we still, even as Christians who trust and love the Lord Jesus, we still do things that might cause us to have an infection. But it won't take hold. A bit like having the vaccine, that we can still pick up the virus, but it doesn't have that effect on us. What we need to do as Christians, as believers in Jesus, is that we come to God and we confess our sins. The way that we've messed up, the things we've done that we shouldn't have done, and the things we haven't done that we should have done. And we bring them to God, we confess them, and we ask for his forgiveness, and he forgives us. And then we recognise the joyous gift of God, his wonderful grace in our lives, freely given to us. And when we recognise that, then as we read in scripture, the Apostle Paul says that we can find con contentment in any circumstance. Let me read from uh, Philippians and chapter 4. Verse 11, Philippians chapter 4, verse 11. And it says this. Verse 11. I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. And that's also kind of echoed and repeated in Hebrews uh, chapter 3 verse uh, um, chap sorry Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5 and 6 I uh, came across a Christian right well a, a Christian writer um, he's a pastor in America and as an author of several books O.S. Hawkins uh, he wrote this he said little does our world system realize that the presence of God's people is preventing the final collapse of our civilization and ultimate judgment. If we love and the Lord Jesus Christ, we declare ourselves followers of Jesus as Christians, then we have a role to play in helping society, not to pape over the cracks, but to reveal those cracks and to get them sorted out. I was sharing a few weeks ago as as I've been looking at the uh, first letter of John, the fact that we have a command as Christians and our command is to believe in the name of Jesus and to love one another. In other words, we are called to love God and to love our neighbour as ourself. And it's our responsibility to take hold of that role, that great commission to go into all the world to make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. We are the salt and the light. And we're called to stand up for those that are weak and oppressed. We need to be the healing balm of the anointing God in every situation that we encounter, that God leads us into. Let us be his servant. Not to ram God down people's throats, but to share the love of Jesus in the way that we react within the world. 
by our actions as well as our words. You know, sometimes that wallpaper that's over a crack, it needs to be stripped away. Polyfiller put into the, the crack and uh, uh, just to, to, to seal it up. You know, and Jesus is the only propriety brand of, of polyfiller that fit, will actually do the job. In 1 Peter, we read these words, by his wounds, you have been healed. We talked earlier about the wrath of God being poured out on Jesus. You can imagine it, God the Father watching his son being crucified. But God didn't send his wrath down on all those soldiers and all those mockers that were around the cross. He could have taken them out in an instant. No, he poured his anger and his wrath on Jesus. So that you and I do not have to face that anger and wrath. It enables us to have a relationship with God. It enables us to know what satisfaction is because it comes with the love of God. It comes with his peace. It brings his joy into our hearts. It brings the hope of eternal life to each one of us that trust and believe. You know, are you dissatisfied with life? Where nothing really seems to bring peace to you or contentment or satisfaction? Well, let me tell you that you find contentment in Jesus Christ. It's him that you need to seek, that you need to call to. And he will bring that peace, a peace that passes all understanding. He will bring that satisfaction, regardless of the circumstances we find ourselves in. We will be well in our soul. And even as Christians, sometimes the world seems more attractive, doesn't it? And it kind of draws us away. And when we're finding that, we need to draw close to God. Allow him to get rid of that dirt that's built up. Confess our sins. Know that we are forgiven. And allow God to heal us. To restore us. And refresh us in our journey as we go to the new Jerusalem. To the kingdom of God to heaven and in the presence of the living God for a whole eternity. I want to just finish with some words from um, one of the Psalms, kind of summary of what I've been sharing this morning. And uh, you'll notice it's a nice short one this morning. Um, Psalm 107 and verse eight to 15. So let me find Psalm 107. And verses 8 to 15. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for men. For he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. Some sat in darkness and deepest and the deepest gloom, prisoners suffering in iron chains, for they had rebelled against the words of God and despised the counsel of the Most High. So he subjected them to bitter labour. They stumbled and there was no one to help. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble and he saved them from their distress. He brought them out of darkness and the deepest gloom and broke away their chains. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for men. And may the Lord bless his word to us. So there it is. We want peace, we want satisfaction. It is found in no one else but the Lord Jesus Christ. Come to him. Know his peace and know contentment in your life. Amen. Shall we just pray? Lord Jesus, Again, I ask that you will speak into our hearts. Lord, if you're challenging us, we don't know you, then help us to uh, reach out to you, Lord, because you are there and you want to pour out your peace to each one of us. Lord, if we've known you for many, many years, we thank you that you are with us in every circumstance, in every situation. 
Lord, forgive us when we become dissatisfied with our circumstances, but help us to find a contentment and a peace in you. And Lord, I pray that you will watch over us and keep us safe as we go through this week. And Lord, thank you. Thank you that you love us. Jesus, that you died on the cross for us. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you for listening. May the Lord bless you. Thank you, David. Let's finish our time together this morning by saying the grace together. Now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you for joining with us this morning. Hello. Uh, as you may know, I'm about to start uh, a year uh, as an associate uh, for God. And I'm really looking forward to just serving the Lord uh, in this gospel ministry and how what I will do in that year uh, will shape how I will choose to serve him uh, for the rest of my life. Uh, so I'm looking for people who are willing to, to partner with me uh, in that, uh, both prayerfully and financially. Uh, and here's just uh, some information of what it is exactly uh, I'll be doing. We've been running the Glow Associate Scheme since 2004. There's up to four associates each year. And we have three big aims for the associates. First off, to love God and love other people more because they've been associates. Uh, secondly, uh, to understand the Bible and how to handle it. And thirdly, uh, to serve in their local churches, not just whilst they're associates, but, but lifelong. And that's why each associate is linked to a local church um, to actually serve in the local church for their time as an associate. Ultimately, though, we pray that our associates would grow in Christ-likeness. So as Paul writes of Christian workers in 2 Timothy, that they would pursue righteousness, faith, love and peace, along with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. So during their associate year, they each do three big things. They do school visits and training and summer camps. I'm so grateful to the Glad Associates, who over the past couple of school years have been so helpful in visiting the online Bible study groups that we've had. It's just so encouraging that you can actually go and then speak to them about Jesus in perhaps a place where they can't necessarily, they might not be able to go to church, their family might not be Christians, or they might be at a boarding school. They've helped to bring the Bible alive to young people, and they've taught what they themselves are learning on their course. They're always good with a game and to make things fun and engaging for young people. Throughout the year, you get so much Bible input from uh, the staff team in associate time where you'd be meeting up and doing Bible studies weekly. And as well as that, you also just get to serve your local church, being a, a student Bible study leader. Doing the associate scheme has really helped uh, public speaking, so running CUs, doing assemblies, giving talks from the Bible, all of this stuff um, will really help me uh, with things I do going forward. It's so cool being able to spend a whole month of your summer just on camp explaining the gospel to them and just seeing them have a great time and coming to understand a bit more about who Jesus is. It's really useful to just be able to develop those skills of leading Bible studies, giving talks, um, answering campus questions. Uh, being able to get to grips with the Bible with uh, kids of inter or senior age and just having such an, a big impact and leading to so many uh, people thinking about the Christian faith but also some uh, coming to believe and trust in Jesus as well. Being a God associate has also really helped me as a teacher and um, just for example just being able to get to know young people and knowing how they work and what they like and enjoy um, was great. Learning how to build professional relationships with people through going into school has been really helpful in um, me building relationships with my clients in my job now. It's been great to see what previous associates have gone on to do. Some are now nurses or engineers or scientists or teachers or church ministers, all kinds of things. And it costs around £15,000 per associate per year. Uh, so we asked them to raise £5,000 towards that and I guess they in turn are asking you to consider uh, giving towards uh, raising that figure. 
thank you very much indeed for anything you can do as you consider uh, partnering with, with them in this way. So uh, if you'd like to partner with me uh, in this year of gospel ministry, uh, you can receive regular prayer updates uh, or give a one-off donation uh, or even uh, commit to, to a monthly direct debit. Uh, and I'll be in touch soon to see uh, if you're interested in doing any of these things. Uh, or you could message me directly uh, or anyone else in the Glod office. Uh, I guess why I just can't wait to be an associate is just for uh, my love for the Lord to grow and then to serve others uh, through that. Uh, but from me, I just thank you uh, for taking the time just to see uh, what it is uh, I'll be doing.